Hi, welcome to Bead Mosaics. I'm Sabrina Fry, and this is a tutorial on how I created this guy whose name is Vlad, who's a brown pelican that I created on a recycled cabinet door using seed beads and also glass bugle beads. Um, the background was kind of unique and that I uh, like to recycle items, so this is um, a cabinet door that I got from Ikea and I got it in a clearance section, like $2 or something. Um, but it has a really beautiful wood grain, so I decided to use it for um, this project. Here, what I am doing, um, and the way I start my projects, is that I always use a base primer. I sand the area that I'm gonna be setting beads down on, and then I lay a coat of primer down. Um, the primer is really important. Um, if you don't sand the area and put primer down, the beads won't stick. They will uh, pull up because th these cabinet doors are made to withstand sticky fingers and all those types of things. And so um, make sure that you do a good prep on all of your pieces before you start laying beads down. It's very, very important. Um, what I'm doing here is laying a line of silicone. And this silicone is really thick and goopy. Now you can use liquid nails. Here I'm using silicone. And this silicone is made by GE. It's a product called Iron Grip. However, this product is discontinued. Um, and I liked it because it came in a really easy to dispense container that, um, again, is no longer available. But liquid nails works just fine. Um, anything you can do use that is goopy and thick. Now here, you'll notice that I am using a lot of different types of beads. I started out using the same bead. Now I'm mixing up uh, twisted beads with straight beads, with iridescent beads and opaque beads. This is completely up to you, how you want to mix your beads and the look and, and effect that you want to create comes with experience. It comes with experimentation. Um, and just just play with it. As you can see here, um, there's his breast is mixed versus um, his feathers, which are a solid color, and now I'm also adding a new color. Now I do these kind of in a straight line, but as you can also see, I'm randomly putting these in, and I make sure that the head of the bead is kind of jammed into that goopy silicone. You want to make sure that the silicone does not get to the top of the bead because then it will look sloppy. Um, and this, again, comes with experience. Don't be hard on yourself if your first piece is really goopy, sloppy looking. Um, you know, learning how to use the silicone without slopping it everywhere it takes a lot of practice. And I've, I've had years of practice to work with this. Um, but here I am incorporating a different color because I'm working on a different part of the bird. And just trying to get a completely different effect than I had before. Now here, um, the feathers on the back of this bird are completely different than they are on the side where his wings are. So I'm using a new size. Uh, the same that I used on the longer beads at the bottom, but I had made them smaller going up. Um, again, this is based on experience. There are no patterns to this. This is just looking at reference pictures and using my instincts to decide which length of beads to use in which particular areas. Um, it does require you to have a good selection of beads available. Um, because I do this all day long, I have hundreds of thousands of beads and different styles available to me. Now, this section, I am doing his beak. And because of the level of detail in his beak and the fact that his beak is not furry or fuzzy or feathery, I decided to use seed beads. And what I have done here is laid a line of glue down and then using pre-strung seed beads, which I don't always use, but here I use the pre-strung to get a very specific effect. I lay the beads down and I pull the string out. Now, the reason I pull the string out is multi. One of the reasons is that the string will change the color of the bead depending on the type of bead that you're using. 
And another reason is that it tends to get sticky and stuck. And every time I try to cut it, I end up making a bigger mess than I started with. So um, I usually just pull the strings out. Um, this also requires some tweezer work. As you can see here, I'm using the tweezers with individual beads to fill in the gaps and also create specific details. Now, this nice little glue uh, gun that I was using there is very interesting. It's called an air pen, and it allows this air pen allows me to uh, lay down very, very specific lines of glue. And it is like a syringe that's powered by air, and I just refill it with Aileen's Craft Glue, and then it allows me to lay down these very specific lines of glue. Now, one thing you have to be careful of is here I'm using silicone and craft glue. These two items do not mix. So whenever you use them together, you have to allow very long, and I'm talking multiple days of drying time, to put them next to each other. Otherwise, they have a chemical reaction to each other and change color, especially with white. You will notice it. It turns like a violent green. I call it kryptonite green. Uh, so here I have done this um, where I did the silicone. I waited three days before I did his beak and then I waited another three days before I started using the silicone near the beak again. It is really important that you don't skip this process. Um, Vlad was a great project because I got to use a lot of different techniques of mine um, and I have shorter videos that show kind of specifics on this but um, you know, a lot of this is just practice, 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 um, having a lot of beads in inventory, again, like I mentioned, and paying attention to the details. Don't do this rushed. This is not something you can do in a hurry, something you need to think about and plan for. Um, I hope this video has helped you kind of understand my process a little bit more, and I do have several other videos that you can watch, and also finished videos of other projects that I have done. I don't always film every process and stage of my pieces, but I do everything I can to try to help you out. If you have any questions and need to get a hold of me, please get on my website. You can email me um, and contact me, and I am available at shows on a regular basis. Thank you for watching and have a great day.